Welcome! This is our fifth and last video in this series about Git diff, merge and rebase. In this video we're going to recap and wrap up the series, so we'll quickly go over the main things we said and learned about Git diff, merge, merging conflicts and rebase, and then we'll consider our knowledge and draw some conclusions as to when it's best to use each tool. In our first video, we learned that a diff shows the differences between two files or snapshots and can be quite minimal in doing so. A patch is an extension of a diff, augmented with further information such as context lines and file names, which allow it to be applied more widely. We also looked closely at the format generated by git diff. In the second part of this series, we talked about git merge and explained that merging is the process of combining the recent changes from several branches into a single new commit that is on all of those branches, that is reachable from the branch object pointing to the tip of that branch. In a way, merging is the complement of branching in version control. A branch allows you to work simultaneously with others on a particular set of files, whereas a merge allows you to later combine separate work on branches that diverged earlier from a common ancestor commit. In the third video, we closely considered the three-way merge algorithm, how Git applies it to automatically resolve conflicts, and how we can resolve conflicts manually. In the fourth part of this series, we covered Git rebase. We saw that whereas with Git merge we added a new merge commit to the history, with Git rebase we rewrite history. We create new commit objects instead of existing ones, resulting in a linear history graph rather than a diverging graph. We explain that the command is called rebase because it changes the base commit of the branch it's run from or the commit history it's run from. When using git rebase, we're asking it to give our branch another base, that is, pretend as if it had been born from a different commit and replay the changes introduced in these commits on the new base. So, now that we've acquired a few new tools, we may ask ourselves which one is the most suitable for us to use. To answer this question, let's zoom out and look at the big picture. In git, we basically record a history of a file system over time. In the very first video about Git, we mentioned that a commit is a snapshot of the entire repository at a single point in time with some metadata and almost always a pointer to a parent commit. So, what does it mean to have a history in Git? Well, one way to look at it is that the commit history represents a record of what actually happened in the repository. It's a historical document. An archaeologist could then dive deep into this and find out the truth, what really happened, by whom and when. Under this view, even if we made a mistake and included a few commits that we now regret in retrospect, we should revert them perhaps by using git revert and add that step of reverting them to the history, as the history should reflect what happened. The history included the mistake and then correcting that mistake. Another way is to look at the commit history as the story of how the project was made. As a story, we would like it to be as readable and as clear as possible. Perhaps for a fellow programmer who goes over the code as part of a code review process or just wants to understand what happened in a certain piece of the code and why, that developer would probably appreciate a clean, precise history even if it was edited in order to reflect what had happened in a better way. This is like the edited version of the repo, after having an initial draft or perhaps many drafts in the process of creation. As you wouldn't publish the first draft of a book, why would you publish the messy way you find yourself going through while writing your code? Under this view, it's best to use tools like git rebase or git reset in order to tell a story in a way that's best for the reader right before you push it for others to see. Different teams and different projects work differently. For some teams, it's most important to have the true story recorded so they never use rebase. Maybe it's because some of the team members haven't watched the previous video so they don't feel as comfortable with rebasing. Maybe. 
For another team, it may be that every pool request or merge request must consist of very small commits that tell this feature story in the most coherent way, so they rebase quite often. There is no right or wrong here. There is, however, one wrong thing to do, and that is to rebase commits that have already been pushed and others may have based on. So we can rebase local changes before pushing them and then merging them with the main branch or rebase a remote branch that we know for sure only we have modified. But anyway, never rebase any commit that another developer may have relied on. I hope that by now you feel confident when reading the output of git diff and that you have a better understanding of what a git commit is, the process of merge, resolving conflicts, and rebasing. In future videos, we'll dive deeper into different corners of Git and we'll definitely rely heavily on these last few videos. You should now feel very comfortable working with Git with a myriad of different scenarios and workflows. In the meantime, I hope you've learned some new things about Git and deepened your knowledge. Please, as always, I'm really happy to see your comments, feedback, requests, and... In the meantime, I hope you've learned some new things and deepened your knowledge about Git. As always, I'm super happy to receive your feedback, comments, requests, or questions down in the comment section below. So please go ahead and leave them and I'll see you all next time.